views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Yep, guess what? You are tuned in to Questionable Conversations with me, Dr. Pat, my friend, my colleague, Dr. Glenna Rice. And right now, for those of you that are wondering, what the heck are these two going to talk about today? Uh, One of my favorite topics is about prosperity, but it's also about looking at your life and seeing what kind of leader you're going to become in the world. What kind of leader you're going to become in the world? And by the way, Do you think you are a leader at all? What does that mean? I had a really interesting conversation earlier today about this and didn't even know it was in the air, but it is because that's what Dr. Glenna Rice is all about. You know, look, she has been on the show. And as a matter of fact, I shared something this morning as I was interviewed about what kind of culture we strive to create here. And one of the things I said is I learned from one of our hosts that we don't have to live in solving problems if we can live in possibilities. And that's Dr. Glenna Rice. Now look, today's show is big, it's bold, and what? Yeah, it is out of the box. And we've got two people we're gonna introduce to all of you out there. Glenna, it's great to have you. Hi, Dr. Pat, happy to be on. I love doing this show with you every month. (laughs) A blast. Oh, and I love that you were interviewed and you mentioned possibilities. Oh, I don't think boy. I that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have two amazing guests joining us today, two of my favorite people in the world from Australia. Um, they're Steve and Chutissa Bowman, an amazing couple, really an amazing couple. They have an amazing relationship. That's one of the things that just inspires me about them. But they also are um, leaders in business. They have um, a way of having... Speaking of benevolent capitalism, um, yeah, generating yeah. wealth, prosperity, there's so many things that these th- two are doing to change the planet and create a totally different possibility with how we look at business, money, creating. Um, Chutis is an, they're both authors of many books, and they work with CEOs and b- big boards and creating senior executives. They are amazing what they've been creating and they're offering possibilities yeah. to everybody about it. change yeah. what yeah. these things yeah. we could be stuck in. Yeah. Uh, and you know, part of what I love about you both is, and uh, so great to have you here, is that when I first came out of the gate and launched uh, the Transformation Network, one of the first business shows that I did and still do today was called Enlightened Capitalism. And if there were people that had tomatoes in the audience, they would have certainly thrown them my way because how dare I put the words enlightenment and capitalism in the same sentence. But I don't have to take that anymore because we have both of you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're very pleased to be on the show with you all and uh, look forward to having this conversation. You know, I want to start off by talking about conscious leader. I want to talk about those two words. Um, We are a conscious network. And let me tell you what I mean by that is 15 years ago, I was gifted because I was in a place of struggle and panic and depression. And I was gifted with a wrong phone number dial that changed my life forever. Um, We are known as a number one positive talk network. 
Um, we are heard on, you know, hundreds of channels worldwide. And our tagline is conscious communication and action for a better world. And I used to have to define that for people. Now I don't. But we are now talking about conscious leader. And I think we have to define that. <laughs> well, one of the greatest definitions you can come up with is something that actually isn't a definition that <laughs> provides people with an awareness of what we're talking about. So mm. when we talk about, I mean, one of the great, one of the great uh, conversations always is, well, what do you mean by conscious? Yeah. And what we've found that actually really resonates with us is consciousness is where you're aware of everything and judge nothing. Mm. And so from that space, when you start to look at conscious leadership, then you're willing to be the leader in your life before you can ever expect anyone to see you as a leader. Be a leader in your life where you're aware of everything and judge nothing, including yourself. And from that space, you can then actually create amazing possibilities in the world. We have been working in the world of leadership and governance and board and CEO and the C-suite of the world. And we realized that uh, most people who are actually being a leader in the major organization are, are not choosing to be a conscious leader. They are <laughs> being like a, a everyday normal leader. So we started to invite people to see that, hey, you know, if you're already a leader, what would it be like if you even add this being a conscious leader in your uh, way of being in your organization? And fancy that. What would it be like if you add being a conscious leader in your own life first as well? And that, you know, like you, you were saying about uh, getting uh dodging the tomato being thrown at us. <laughs> we introduced this 10 years ago, like everyone give us a look and say, are you crazy? <laughs> exactly. But, you know, I, crazy is, uh, I got to tell you, I think I must have written the book about crazy being the new normal because I, I worked in corporate America for 24 years. I was uh, part of what we call the business infrastructure here for the phone company, both the vested and new company. And three out of the five performance reviews I got before I left, believe it or not, said that they thought I lived on another planet. I now know that was a compliment. But isn't that part of what we're talking about here is we have to write a new narrative on bringing the words conscious and leader together, I think, and I think you're doing it. I think, um, like you, you are you also did it uh, with your radio show and everything mm -hmm. because being a conscious leader uh, in this world is being willing to go where no one else has been willing to go before and be willing to receive everything that the the norm, the so-called norm, will judge us because we. We, we all know that, uh, you know, it's truly possible to create more and generate more from this space. And I'm so happy to hear that you, you have been trying to dodge tomato as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets to the stage where you're so weird, it becomes a new normal, exactly as you said, Dr. Pat. So we're finding now that we're, we're traveling around the world. We're getting invited as keynote speakers to conferences and we get into the boardrooms of some of the top companies around the world. And we talk about strategic awareness because, you, know, you know, of course, to throw the word strategy in every now and then just you know, gets your attention. But um, talking about this whole notion of being aware, being conscious, but also using the language of this reality so that people can actually understand what you're saying, but can relate it back to what they think they know about the world. And this is one of the great, uh, the, the great joys that we have is to be able to use a languaging that taps into what they already know, but also invites them to other possibilities. Yeah, this is really part of the conversation that I so love. Um, I don't get inter I don't get interviewed that often because I'm always interviewing people and speaking with them, as Glenna will tell you. Because I just love it. I mean, it's not something I sat down and decided to do. It found me. And I got really, really good at saying yes. Here's the question I'd like to ask all three of you. What is it that you believe, that you believe 
are some of the greatest challenges that get in the way of our conscious leadership gene, if you want, if I could call it that, or our conscious leadership energy. What is the greatest challenge that gets in the way? And then how do we help each other move to the possibilities of unlimited potentiality? Glenda, do you want to start with that? <laughs> <laughs> Happy to. Well, what I believe or say what I know um, that gets in the way of the leadership that we're talking about is really one of the things about being a leader is that you're willing to go, you know, where no one else has gone before, regardless of whether anyone follows you on your way or fault goes along with you. And that can be one of the things that can really get in the way because we can start to judge ourselves if people, you know, are throwing rotten tomatoes at us or yeah. judge if something's wrong with us. So we are looking for other people to follow us. And that stops the possibility of what we can actually start creating as a leader. It, it stops what we know from showing up. It stops us from following the energy of what we know because people may not go along with you when you first start talking about this stuff, but people will start hearing it if you continue to know what you know and go forward. I mean, um, Tristan and they were, Steve were just talking about how 10 years ago they walked in and people thought they were crazy and you were talking about that. But now look what both um, all of you guys are creating because you've been willing to go where no one else would go, whether anyone followed you or not. Yeah. Um, who wants to go first? Oh, well, I, I, I'll go with uh, that because I, I strongly uh, sense that most people just want to fit in and be like everyone else and be normal. And no one seemed to be to have a courage enough to say, hey, I don't need to fit in. I can be something totally different. I can be whatever I that would write for you, for, for mm -hmm. me. So so the the key thing for me is most people just want to be like everybody else, to fit mm -hmm. in and not to rock the boat. And that stopped them from being the leader in their own life and in the world. Mm. I think adding to all of those, one of the things that I find, particularly because of the work we do with CEOs and chairs of boards, um, is that the, the one thing that holds people back from being, actually being the promise of what they could be mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. leadership roles is that they've already decided that that they're right. They've already decided that they know as much as they know. And it's the points of view that we find that people take on things that actually limit their ability to create greater change. So what we find particularly with CEOs is that often they lose their sense of curiosity. They mm -hmm. lose their sense of, you know, what else? What else is possible? If we couldn't do it this way, what are the other ways we could do? You know, what are the different ways that we can actually create change in ways that we hadn't otherwise considered? That sense of curiosity sometimes gets uh, lost under the, the, the mundaneness of, you know, trying to fix things, trying to make things work. So... The, the truly conscious leader is the person who's always asking, what else? What else? What else can I add to my life? What else can I add to my business? What else can I add to whatever else I want to add to? Um, and it's that sense of curiosity that I find is the hallmark of an amazingly good leader, always looking for what else is possible. Well, trying to fit in would stop you from having the sense of curiosity. Absolutely, really. yeah. yeah. Mm. I love that. You know, this morning I was asked if I could identify three things that I thought attributed to the success or the success of an entrepreneur, and the question, something like that. And I was reading um, your blog about this. And I just want to mention, for those of you that want to find out more about Glenna, you can go to glennarice.com about the two Bowmans. You can go to the two, the number two, Bowmans with an S.com. I was reading this and I love this. It says there is only one person responsible for the quality of the life you live. And you're not talking about my spouse or my mom or my dad or you're, 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 you're like the buck starts, stops here. But one of the things I love is that you say something that if we could all implement this, this one thing you say, I think our lives would change. I know Dr. Glenner has helped me change my life. And that is every day ask for the greatness of you to show up. That is so powerful. Oh. Glenna, didn't you have to do that, Glenna? Didn't the, didn't the four of us here today in some way, 
I'm a little bit slower than most. It took me a lot of years. But isn't this one of the most powerful things we can share with people? I would say yes. Yeah, to be able to receive the greatness of you, be aware of the greatness of you, know it's there, be mm-hmm. willing to ask for it and, and acknowledge it when it shows up. Those were things that the acknowledging part for me was always a little tricky one because um, mm-hmm. I was more, at, I need to do more and I need to do better. That was a lot of my life. And I didn't spend a lot of time acknowledge when the greatness of me was showing up. And when I started to do that, my life started getting greater, easier, more money showed up. Lots of <laughs> amazing people showed up in my life. Um, I'm traveling the world. So that, uh, yeah, having the greatness of you is mm. such a valuable thing to start asking for and having more of and acknowledge. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Tatusa. Thank you. you. Go ahead. When, when we uh, talk to people, either in the workshop or in the conference, about embody and be the greatness that you could truly be in every moment, we often have people say, but how do you do that? Mm. How? Give me the, give me a step-by-step guide of how do I embody and be the greatness? And all we could say to people is that it's not the how, it's the willingness to be greater than what you have been willing to be before. So each and every one of us has that. Like we could look at our life right now and if we're really not happy with the way we are creating our life, we can look at it and say there are different possibilities. And I know that if I am choosing to be greater than what I have been willing to be before, things will start shifting and changing. And all I'm saying is you all have to start doing, be willing to be what you have been willing, be willing to be greater than what you have been willing to be before, even just five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. You could choose to do five minutes or 10 minutes at the time instead of suddenly be the greatest that you could truly Baby be. Baby steps. Baby steps yeah. can work <laughs> as well. One of the interesting things, Dr. Pat, is that yeah. Yeah, Chitissa and I have been married for 42 years. We've known each other for 45 years. First wow. boyfriend, wow. first girlfriend, all that sort of thing. Every single day I see her ask. So what can I be and do different where I'm greater than I've ever been in my in, in the day before? And and from that space, I see her recreate herself every single day. And it's just an amazing gift to watch this occurring. So it, it actually is a very, very simple tool, but gee, it works. Yeah. You know, I shocked uh, the uh, interv- interviewer this morning with my answer. And she asked me three, three things. And she asked me what I thought contributed to even being here today. 15 years in the industry, voted number one 10 years. We're getting ready to unleash 10 new channels, technology that didn't exist before. And so she asked me that question. And I said, well, you know, it's not going to be, it's not sexy, but here it is. The answer is I opened up the door on day one of this, not knowing what I didn't even know. Today, I don't know what I don't even know, but I'm willing to explore it. And, you know, that is such an important journey. And you said it so brilliantly. The minute that we get to the place of knowing a thing, let's just say, I mean, there's some things we should know, but knowing that thing and not opening up the door of possibilities, we don't even get to the edge of possibilities. We can't even see that a possibility could be probable. And Glenna, I want to ask you about that. And then, you know, uh, each, each of you for a minute, how is it that you all have been able to help so many people get to that door, get to, as you say, that edge of possibility, not just for leading, but for prosperity, for success, for continuity, for giving back to the world. What are the things you all have discovered? Hmm. That's a great question, Dr. Pat. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Glenna. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm getting is it's it it's me, yes, that you know, I, I'm willing to be there for people. I you know, that but it's really that people have shown up that are asking for something different. Mm. They're asking for a different possibility. They're asking some things, you know, I work with bodies mostly as a physical therapist and with my practice and teaching the body classes. So something's going on with their body or it could be in their life and they're asking for something greater, something more, 
And they find me because I'm willing to receive that and I have information they may require to change the things. Um, you know, and I know that, you know, big organizations are asking for Stephen Chutissa to mm. show because there's something that, these, that, you know, there's a door that's cracked open that someone's asking for something and they're willing to see a possibility. And we have some information or tons of information that they're looking for that can help change something in their life. And it may have nothing to do with what they actually came in to see me in my office first <laughs> for, um, but they're asking a question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what I love about this? I know Gary Douglas has said, you know, things like, you know, this is where you, you know, through the practices of anxious consciousness, you know, the empowerment of people to know that they know, you know, my version of it is to be in a place of knowing that, you know, that I know, I know that they, that it's within me. And by opening the door for the possibility of knowing more than I think I know that is a game changer. I'd love, I'd love, uh, Chutissa, maybe for you, Stephen, maybe for you to comment on that. I, for us, we, uh, we create um, the energy and the space for people to recognize that there are different possibilities to what they are, they are having right now. And from that space, then we give them tools to see that uh, that they can use in their life if they are choosing mm -hmm. to perceive and receive that there are different possibilities and they want to create more. So we introduce the, the really super simple tools that call questions, choice, possibilities, and contribution. Mm -hmm. And we, we give them these tools to use so they know that if they live in the questions, they will never go into the conclusion about anything in their mm. life. The, the, the things with people is they tend to create their life based on the conclusion, expectation, projection, and judgment, and trying to bring into their life right here, right now. So what they are actually creating is exactly the same as what they have been creating in the past. And they don't realize why they could not change anything in their life. So when we introduce them to the question, choice, possibility, and contribution, once people start to live and be the question, they could not go into the conclusion, projection, expectation, assumption, and judgment, and start looking at, so what choices do I have here from this question? Steve, you want to talk more about the four tools? It's, it's, it's the... Those four ways of looking at the world are probably the most powerful game changers that this universe has ever seen. We mm -hmm. take to the, we, the leadership team. We have these conversations with, with, with directors around the world. So what are the questions that we could be, that we could choose? What are the questions that I could ask? What are the questions about the questions I've never thought of asking? It's from that sense of curiosity. And then, so what are the choices then that I have? Because I know everything is a choice. I also know that my choice can change at any time. Um, so therefore it makes sense that I choose it constantly. So that way I'm always going to be in the question. Nothing is forever unless I've chosen it to be forever. Oh, and I can change that as well. It's just choice. And then what are the possibilities that that creates that, I'm, that I haven't been willing to see? Because every choice that I make creates multiple possibilities until I judge them and then that destroys all those possibilities. So what would it be like if I chose, looked to see what that created, and chose again? And it's from that sense of excitement that people then see, well, then what contribution can I be to those around me? What contribution can I be to myself? But it's more important than the words is the energy that that creates in every single person. In the corporate world, it generates immense marketing and strategic leverage mm -hmm. to understand what that looks like when you're actually getting up there. And this is the very start of benevolent capitalism. It's the very start of what you were saying before, Dr. Pat, is the, um, is the, the, the person who's in business can actually be a great contribution to the world. But then again, every one of us is in the business of our life. So yeah. what if we started there as well? Yeah. I mean, let's start there. Uh, because I, I was talking about my own journey. I mean, people want to know, 
First of all, they want to know why I'm still around. You know, positive talk didn't exist 15 years ago. And we brought millions of women back to talk radio by that very thing, positive talk. But I lived in the place you're talking about. I don't have a background of broadcasting. I did have somebody try to tell me how to do a good radio show once, and he fired me. Um, but there's something about leading ourselves in the forefront of so much openness to what could be that it's such a special place. What is it that you do when you see that look in somebody's eyes where they get it? And I know the three of you do. I know that you work with people every day. You love it. It's your passion, whether it's prosperity consciousness or leadership or business or questionable parents. You see the light bulb go on. What do they say to you each? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you gave me my life back and stuff I hear often. Really yeah. things. They say very, um, very mm -hmm. grateful for that, for having that in their lives because that's really mm -hmm. giving them access to who they be yeah and they, you know that they know that they know is what we're talking about um it's uh, an amazing thing to see when people get that and what you've done is you've opened them up to you know who what they be to the consciousness of everything around them that the contribution that they were talking about um that steve was just talking about that contribution mm -hmm. where everything starts to contribute to them in a different way there's a light bulb of possibilities that goes mm -hmm. off and that when you see that and you're contributing to everything when people start to get who they are, what they be, what they'd like to create, how they'd like to create it. When those things start showing up, um, the start of a benevolent capitalist, possibly. I'd love to hear yeah, Steve talk more about benevolent capitalism when he said that it was just the beginning of benevolent capitalism. I would love yeah. to see what else is possible with that. Yeah, I would too, because, you know, part of this is you both are highly successful, you know, between, between, uh, <laughs> between you, I mean, this is like a power team, CEOs of major organizations, shares of board, senior executives and multi-million dollar global corporations, you know, you run seven plus global businesses. Uh, I'm eager to see what else is possible. But I'd love to hear from each of you too, because I know you've seen it. I know you've seen it all. Almost all of it, maybe. <laughs> one, of the, one of the great comforts that I take in this world is knowing that there are so many good people out there that are actually willing to contribute. And we see this from the, the house husband right up to the senior CEO of a major multi-global organisation. Um, what often happens, and this is what keeps, you know, this is what gets us out of bed in the morning, is that often it'll just be, some little thing that we say where all of a sudden someone goes, oh, my heavens, I'd never thought of looking at it from that perspective. And then they're off and running because what they then start to realize is that there are multiple possibilities and everything is the choice, question, possibility mm -hmm. and contribution. And so the, the start of a benevolent capitalist is someone who recognizes that, the, that this world, this universe is truly an abundant place. They also realize at the same time, and it's probably totally different than what I've already decided it is. So I wonder what that would look like if I was willing to be open to everything that occurred out there. Now, when you start to look at that from a business perspective, then they start to look at different markets, new ways of creation, new ways of being with people, understanding the difference that their organization makes in people's lives. When you're dealing with your own personal life, you then start to see there's a different way of being with your parents a different way of being with your kid, a mm. different way of being with all the, all the relatives out there that are so intent on telling you how wrong you are that it's just hilariously funny. So that <laughs> different way of being is, is one of the greatest joys in the world. And it's not about being you know, positive or negative or optimistic, mm -hmm. not optimistic. It's just seeing things for what they are without judging it. And in particular, that includes without judging yourself. Mm -hmm. So the benevolent capitalist is someone who's willing to recognize that you know, benevolence is not what most people think it is. Benevolence actually comes from two ancient Latin words, which are bene and volence, which means wishing well for all. And capitalism originally came from the notion of capita, which was to grow your herd organically. So if we want to grow our herd organically and wish well for all, you've got the start of being a benevolent capitalist. Mm. 
I I love that. I mean, you know, I grew up in a family in New York City here and, you know, my my uncle used to say to me, listen, the buck has got to stop right here, Pat. It's got to start with you. It's got to stop with you. You've got to take a look at everything you're thinking and how that shows up in every action. We're going to take a short break. We come back. Yeah, we've got lots more to talk about here because we're talking about the possibilities for you for the rest of your life. When we come back, we've got the two moments. We're going to talk about their book launch. We're going to give you lots of information. Thanks to Dr. Glenna Rice, my friend and colleague. I'm Dr. Pat. We'll be right back. Curious about the meaning of life? Do you want to deepen your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. The school also organizes group meditations each year to benefit humanity. Whether you're just beginning to reflect on the spiritual side of your life or are a more experienced spiritual seeker, the school warmly welcomes you to join our group. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit esotericstudies.net. That's esotericstudies.net. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Time. Radio. Tune in to the Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. A word of caution. If you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Amber Teal, founder of The Healthy Edge, is bringing you the hit show Healthy Edge Radio, living with power, passion, and purpose. Amber provides the support and tools necessary for you to finally release the weight and emotions that are hidden beneath the weight. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information on how you can take the next step with Amber, visit GetTheHealthyEdge.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Are you the conscious leader of your life? Dr. Glenna Rice is here today, and we have two fabulous guests. Uh, Chutisa joining us here today and Steve Bowman. Both of them, eh, you know, they're known as the two Bowmans, but they're actually known as much, much more than that. And so is Dr. Glenna Rice. Um, Many of you have talked about every show she's ever done with us the possibility. Certainly I've talked about it. I really believe that us, our network, this team is at the place we are now because of what she's been willing to show up and teach. And 
over the years, I've asked her some really, really interesting questions, and she answered them without judgment. Dr. Glenna, before we go ahead, um, how can we find out more about you? And then how can we find out more about the two moments? Fabulous guest. <laughs> Fabulous guest. Yeah, I'm so grateful they came on the show. I'm having so much fun listening to them. So to find out more about me, glennarice.com. Pretty easy, my name. And I have a, you know, if you're trying to find me on the planet, right now there's a class coming up in Florida, body class, a three-day body class that I'll be doing there the March 10th, 11th, and 12th, I believe. But you can go to accessconsciousness.com slash Dr. Glenna Rice to find out my facilitating schedule and the classes I'm doing. Pretty easy to find me. And that the Bowmans, I am so excited by this. You have no idea. I can't wait to spend three days in a room listening to them talk about everything they've been talking about on this show. So they're doing a class called Generating Wealth Beyond Your Current Job in San Francisco, March 3rd and 4th. And then that's going to be followed by Unlocking Your Inner Entrepreneur, an advanced roundtable where we, well, I, we'll get to ask them questions in a different way and look at our businesses and what we'd like to create. I, I, they can speak more about that. And that's going to be on March 5th in San Francisco. What's really cool is they're also going to do a book launch that everyone's invited to. It's yeah. not no charge for this inexpensive class. You just have to show up at Book Passage at 6 p.m. on March 5th in San Francisco, right on the water, waterfront on the Embarcadero. And I'm really excited. They're going to be launching their relaunching their book, Prosperity Consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about the book. I've already taken a sneak peek at it. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of want to flip over a little bit, if we could, and and talk about both. Um, the reason I think that both conscious leadership and, and, you know, prosperity consciousness are related because, and I'm just going to put it out there the way I do all the time, like I do with Glenna. Um, I, I made a post. I, I did a, I rarely do like Facebook posts, right. That are about things that are personal to me. Um, but I did a post the other day and okay. It was a little weird. I sent a, I was told it was weird. I thought it was perfect. I sent a petition and I said, listen, why is this an important petition? It wasn't political. It was about brace yourself, everybody a character from the TV series, The Walking Dead, Carl, the young kid being written off and killed in the series. And so what I asked everybody was to look at why that would be, you know, why would there be that kind of thing that would go on? Why would anybody do anything about, about, little Carl, who's been part of this series all along. And I said, oh my gosh, he's turning 18 years old. They have to give him more money. <laughs> I, I'm telling you. And, you know, they went viral and I just laid it out. And I, you know, I'm a little bit gritty sometimes. And what I say, I say, yeah, who are the real walking dead? I mean, that this is a hit series. These people get paid a lot of money for playing with zombies on TV. <laughs> but it's interesting that this kid who in the comic book series becomes the hero eventually when the zombie war is open. But is it possible that we need to send these people to take this class with you and read your book? I'm just, I'm just saying. Are you, are you talking about the zombies or the people at the studio? I think the people at the studio kind of like The Walking Dead, if you're asking me. I mean, it's fascinating to me that they would do something like that. And yet then when I read further, I said, oh, this is not exactly prosperity consciousness or is it? The, the, the thing that you were talking about, Carl, in the 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 character in yeah. the show, it's you know the the same energy is happening right here right now in the world. I have been working with a lot of women executives, and at the moment, everywhere the women executive who reaching fifty, who thought that they're going to have so many more years left to you know keep on growing expanding starting to get retrenched that's a word we call retrench what do you call it in in us retrench or let go or relinquish from yeah. that position Retire. and 
retire uh, at, uh, at forced retirement. Forced retirement. So they they just get into the skin, thinking, "Oh my goodness, what can we do now? We have not planned anything." So I started writing blogs, talking to to women about the fact that there's never too late to create your life. Yeah. You can totally create yourself, totally new now. Even if this contextual world mm-hmm. not seeing your value anymore because you're getting older than what they think you should be, or they're not willing to pay for what you have to contribute to them. So I created the website called Generative Woman and starting to talk about, you know, creative your life beyond your career and what else you can create and generate after your successful career. And that has been amazing. Like women starting to say, wow, I really do have choices. Yeah. I can actually choose to start my life again when when I'm after 50. Is it not too late? I mean, create that question in that universe. Um, is like, I, I'm just so happy to see that. I'm being the contribution to let women know that, hey, you know, even though you turn 60, you still can create your life now. There's so much more that you can create and generate. So it's almost, Dr. Pat, like your your uh, your petition is almost a parable for what some of the energies are going on out there where a lot of people uh, uh, are expecting that when you get to a certain stage in life, it's over, whether it be 18 or 30 or yeah. 60. What if that wasn't so? And what if that almost 18 year old as a character then created themselves anew yet again so that they actually were able to be the savior of the world be the superhero yeah. to be so, the superhero that everyone has yeah, yeah. what are the women that have been let go of the corporate world that think that the end of their life become a superhero in the the world send me the petition i'll sign it <laughs> yeah Love well, that. Well, you know, it's interesting um, for both of you, but I'll say this. I am one of those women. I'm a woman that looked into the mirror one day as an executive of HR for the telephone company and realized that what I was about to do to implement one of the first downsizing programs in this country was shameful. And I went back into, I, 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 to this day, I explain it like I was taken over by a little alien. I think that is what happened. And I went into my vi- big fat salary job and I went into the bosses and I said, no, I know what you guys are doing. I said, I called them out on it. I said, wait a minute, this was supposed to be early retirement. Why are most of the people you're firing close to pension age? And I'm telling you, uh, it really changed the trajectory of my life and it brought a new sense to me of why I needed to move on. And so I did do those things and now look at what we're doing. We're now helping women rise up. You know, we're not a radio station anymore. We started out that we're two, we have a 200% model that we use. 100% is all about radio and media. The other 200% is about helping people enact their vision. And one of our hosts right now just got a book deal from working with us for 18 months on a brand that didn't exist because I asked her the question, what else is possible for you? And thank you, Glenna, for that. But this is the question I want to ask you. Many people don't believe that prosperity is in their destiny. I would love to know what the message would be for them. And by the way, I'm just saying to the actor that played Carl, the petition is out there and somehow they're trying to figure out how to bring this dead kid back. But what do we say to the people? And I say, and I think I'm finding this in women as well. You know, what do we say to them when they believe that prosperity is for the few? Can I answer that in two parts or give give some sort of insight, just the, the weird and wacky way we look at it? Yeah, the please. First thing, I'm going to go back a little bit to what you said um, mm-hmm. a, a minute or so ago in terms of uh, your experience with HR and people cutting costs. One of the things we invite people to consider, and not just in your own life, but also in the business that you're working, which is 
what if the best way of cutting costs was to create more revenue? What if we could actually start to look at it from a totally different space and start mm -hmm. to turn things around? So what if we looked at what else we can add, what else we can create, rather mm -hmm. than what we take away? Right. And, and this is a, a very, very powerful message for people to get. Um, what else can I add to my life is not about being busier. It's about what else can I add to my life? What else can I add to my life? Mm -hmm. And what can I be and do different? that would actually make all of this easier for me. So everyone has within them the keys to prosperity, which does not just mean money. It means the willingness to be all that you can be and the willingness to actually receive the gifts that the universe is so desperately wanting to give you if only you'd get out of, get out of your own way. So one of the things that we invite people to look at is if you understand the three lies of scarcity, then you're already starting to create a more prosperous life because what we find is these lies of scarcity we buy into and therefore it changes the way that we actually look at the world and how we're choosing to be with the world. And when we, uh, when we talk about prosperity and wealth, people immediately go in to look at money. Yeah. And That's not about money at all. Prosperity and wealth is a beyond money, but it's also include money. Mm -hmm. It's a, a space and state of being that totally come from within, and we all have that already. But most of us refusing to claim on and acknowledge it by the point of view that it's not possible to, for them. And uh, it, it's prosperity and wealth is about a sense of no lack in, in their life, no lack in the universe, the sense right. of abundance in all things. So if, if they could actually even start looking at that space that what if there's no lack? What if there are infinite possibilities? What if nothing is a problem, but everything is possibilities? Would that be possible for them to see that it is truly possible for them to have that in their own reality and their own life? And the key thing is they have to get rid of the lies of scarcity. Would you like to talk more, Steve? Do you, about do, do you want us to chat a little bit about those, Dr. Pat? I would love, I'm just sitting here listening to you two. Yeah. I could listen to yeah. you for hours but right. because so I think the world is calling forth for this message more now than I've seen in 15 years. And I really believe that the new narrative, which is new to a lot of people, folks are really just hungry for. Well, one of the things that we've found is, is that if you understand or if you're willing to acknowledge that there are these three lies of scarcity out there, literally what you're going to do is kick yourself under the table and say, well, duh, I didn't realize that they were everywhere. Mm. So here are the three lies, just, and everyone will look at them slightly differently, but listen to the next conversation you have with someone and listen for these lies coming out in their conversation and then be aware of where you buy into them. So the three lies are simply this. Number one, first lie of scarcity, there's not enough. There's not enough time. There's not enough money. There's not enough money. There's not enough money. <laughs> there's not enough people. There's not, you know, and wherever there's not enough, you know, if ever you find someone saying, I don't have time for this, it, they're trying to tell you that they've bought into the lie of scarcity, that time is, uh, is a, a linear construct, whereas we know that it actually isn't. Um, I don't have enough money is a lie that they've bought into that there's not enough money out there. But we know that also is a lie. There's an infinite supply of money out there. It's just in different places and looks different to what we'd already decided it should be. So when people buy in the first lie of I don't have, so a lot of people said I don't have enough money to do anything. So they don't even begin to choose to create anything like that. So we introduce to them to say that, First, make a choice. Whatever you want to create, choose it. And then once you choose it, you could be the question about, so what would it take for me to create and generate money to, actually, to actualize this possibility that I have chosen? But if they buy into the life scarcity of there's not enough, then they won't even go into question. 
So just be aware of any time you hear there's mm-hmm. not enough. And we hear this all the time around boardrooms. You know, we don't have enough clients. We don't have enough this. There's not enough time for us to do this. We don't have the skills. There's not enough skills in our organisation to do this. Then that stops any other possibilities because you've bought that as real and true. So the second lie of scarcity makes it even more interesting because not only is there not enough, Dr. Pat, but also it's really hard. Yeah, you, know, you thought it was hard this year, <laughs> next year, until all the tax cuts come in, and yeah, you, know, you thought yeah you know, it was hard, hard ten years ago, but it's even harder now because our life is more complex. So be people buy into the lie that it's hard, and mm. because of that lie, they look for all of the evidence to support their point of view that it's hard. See, I told you it was hard. <laughs> so what if it was actually easy? What would I need to be and do different that would make it even easier? So everything can be easy because that also is a point of view. So whichever point of view you take, you're going to be absolutely correct. I prefer to have a point of view that it's easy because then I will be looking at all the things that create the elegance of my life. My favourite word for this year, Dr. Pat, is elegance. Yes. And that word is having the greatest impact with the least amount of effort. So always look for the elegance in your life. Where can I make the greatest impact with the least amount of effort as opposed to the greatest amount of effort with absolutely no impact? <laughs> yeah, I think that's funny. You and I both pick words that start with E. Uh, I know. It's fun, isn't it? It's not funny. You, you so, picked elegance, and I don't know how it came to me. I was just sitting there in my little man. Exquisite. Uh-huh. I, it came to me. It was like, that's the year. That's this year in every way. Let's have um, both. Exquisite have elegance. Both. Now I'm excited. Now I'm really excited because uh-huh. aren't we talking about helping people really change their point of view? That's exactly yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. If, I can, if I can just finish off on that please, third please. one, because this, this, this completes the infinite circle. So the first life scarcity is there's there not, there not enough. Not enough of whatever, time, money, people, skills, etc. Then not only is there not enough, but gee, it's hard and it'll get even harder. The third lie of scarcity, Dr. Pat, is amazing because it makes the other two totally invisible. You don't even think to question them. And the third lie of scarcity is, and that's just the way it is. That's my Mm -hmm. upbringing. That's where I live. That's my Mm -hmm. culture. That's the business I'm in. That's what, and it's just the way it is. And you don't think to even question the other two. So all of those things help us buy into the life scarcity and it's permeated through every part of every single culture in every person's life. It's not difficult to get over if you realise that actually there's plenty out there. Where might it be? Who could I talk to? What do I need to be and do different? I wonder if it looks different to what I've already decided. It's actually really easy because now I'm going to start changing things to make it easier. Maybe baby steps, but everything can be easy if I have that as a point of view. And then the last one is, so how do I want it to be? Because how you choose to be with the world and mm-hmm. see see the world is exactly how you're going to create it. So how do I want it to be? Wow. I love that. I do too. I, You know, I cannot believe how amazing this conversation is and by the way there are many ways people can find out more about you both um i was uh plugging in myself looking at the master class series and some of the other things that are are going on and what you're doing i want to make sure everybody knows they can find out more if they go to the website the two number two bowman's b-o-w-m-a-n-s.com uh, and then Glenna, uh, Dr. Glenna, uh, GlennaRice.com, right, Glenna? Yeah, GlennaRice.com, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, we have a few minutes. I want to just go around. I want to ask you, first of all, thank you all. What's your personal message? What do you want to leave us with? And please, any other way we can find out more about you? Glenna, do you want to start? Let me start with that, my personal message. I have so much stuff right now after everything you just said. Ah! Know that you know, choose from possibilities, choose the contribution of the universe, create choices that last for 10 seconds, and what else is possible you've never imagined. Um, GlennaRice.com. It's the easiest way to find me. Yes. For me, I, for me, I love the, the quote from Gandhi that be the change you want to see in the world. And that's the one that I have been uh, 
choosing to be that for many, many, many years. And I, I became aware that for me to actually be that, I would have to make the choice to be a catalyst for change mm-hmm. and for different possibilities. And I would invite everyone to know that each and every one of us can make a choice to be a catalyst for different possibilities in the world, but we have to make a choice to be that. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. I can listen to my wife all day. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> the, the message I've got, and this is probably uh, something that uh, opens up doors for a lot of people, and particularly in the businesses that we work with, is that every problem is just a possibility with a judgment attached to it. So if we're willing to look at things with no judgment, you will see the possibilities that are, that accrue from that. If we look at something and we judge it as right or wrong or good or bad, then it will actually be the problem you've already decided it should be. So every problem is simply a possibility with a judgment attached. Change your judgment to no judgment, and then the possibilities are there for you to grasp. Wow. Wow. I hope that we will do this again soon. I really do. I I really look forward to, uh, let's just call it a progressive conversation. Dr. Glenna, thank you for all that you do. And thank you for this amazing show. Thank Thank you, you, Glenna. Thank Thank you, you, Dr. Dr. Pat. Well, as I like to say, yep, let's rock on, everybody. Uh, Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. If you want to find out more about us, go to thetransformationnetwork.com or you can go to the drpatshow.com or you could just Google Dr. Pat, Dr. Glenna, the two Bowmans. And remember this, you, you are perfect. We'll see you next time. Audio was via a Skype call.